I don't know, probably never. What I do know is this is for F Beauty, and if I have remembered, you should be watching me in black and white right now. This is, as the title, thumbnail, and if you've read any of it, description, will have told you, is a collab between myself and the beautiful Stacey from Stacey's Makeup Corner. And we are doing a monochromatic look using September Rose Slush One and Slush Two. So, my darlings, as I have said for some considerable time now, and here echoed on other less imaginative gems. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And indulge. Because here it comes. Hey lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay. I no doubt will have shown you these in the intro. These are Slush 1 and 2 from September Rose. Now, I have a soft spot in my heart for September Rose because they were the first company to trust me enough to give me a, a discount code with them. And at the time, I was a lot smaller than I am now. So... Let's get them the right way round. Slush one and slush two. Now my, my discount code for them is BOMBER, all in caps, and you save 10%. Now it used to be non-affiliated, but because I've driven so many sales her way, she's like, I can't leave you at non-affiliated, so I now do get a small commission from it every so often. So I love these. I love the fact that slush is a mixture of matte with a few shimmers and slush 2 is pure matte and it continues the story. <clears throat> if you look, they, they line up. Big brother, little brother. Or big sister, little sister. And it just gives you more options in terms of gradients and depth of shadows. Very often she will have a combo deal if you buy them both together. And if you don't have any of them, I highly suggest you pick them up. Um, even if you just pick up the original. Because, as you will see, they are amazing. Now, uh, this is a collab with the lovely Stacey's Makeup Corner. Uh, she has recently purchased Slush 1 and 2. And I said to her, well, when it arrives, do you want to do a collab? And she was absolutely over the moon with the idea. So that's what this is. We've each chosen... I've got red on my boob already. Marvellous. God knows how I did that. Um... We've each chosen a specific colour we're going to use. I was going to go for the greens, uh, but I've changed my mind. You're going to have to wait and see to find out which of the other colours I have chosen. And obviously, I'm not going to support <clears throat> spoil the surprise as to which colour Stacey is using. But those of you who know her well will probably be able to guess. Now, this is still a teaching channel. So by virtue of that, the fact that I want beginners to be able to keep up with me and that uh, blending too quickly really bloody hurts with my chronic pain, <clears throat> I go slower than a lot of people. I talk you through step by step. All the blending is done real time. I don't cut any of the blending out. If 
this means my film is a little bit too long for you. Up there, somewhere, at the end of my luminous makeup brush. Good lord. There is a speed widget. Feel free to use it and speed me up. I may end up sounding like a chipmunk. Only you will know this. Um, I'm about to insert a clip detailing the differences between deep set eyes and hooded eyes. I have deep set eyes and for a long time, listening to certain beauty gurus on here, I was convinced I had hooded lids. It was only during a pain somnia moment when I was doing some research myself that I realised I have deep set eyes and it was from that point that I made a point of mentioning it in my films so that those of you with similar issues can tell the difference because the workarounds for each type of eye are different even though the issues that we get in terms of eyeshadow performance and wear are very similar. When I insert the clip, if you've not been here before, it's very, very up close and personal. It's literally just my eyes because I want you to be able to see what I'm talking about. Once the clip is done, I'll be back and applying some colour. So, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid 
it tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again. It tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Hope you found that helpful. Right, now, obviously I've already ruled out the greens. I usually would go for a purple, or a blue, or a green. But I'm going to do something completely left field for me. I don't wear orange that often, but whenever I do, I get an awful lot of compliments. So, I'm going to start, and I'm going to do an orange look. This, it's clean, it's just stained, it's a do colour, quite what I would call a medium spread blending brush uh, compared to this one. Whatever the width of the head, that's how far it's going to blend the colour out. And because I'm not sure yet how many colours I want to use, um, I'm, I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush to start off with. trying to decide which of these two oranges are deeper. I think it's going to be a tiger's blood. Oh, Tiger King. Carol Furkin Baskin. I did not do these and I did not break curfew by going to a uh, salon either. These are glue-on ones. I don't know if you can see how much they've actually grown out since I glued them in. There we go, look. See that gap? I actually found the way to keep nails on. It's those clear jelly pads rather than the white ones. And then applying glue around the edges of your cuticle, where the, the pad doesn't quite reach, and on the back of the nail before you apply it. These have been on for 10 days now. Amazing. Right, so I'm going to start off by going into Tiger's Blood. And whilst I'm blending, I will tell you a little bit more about Stacey. Um, I always hold the brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I'm 46 years old. I've lost 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. So to try and prevent tiger striping on the lid, I always use circular movements. I go in this direction towards the nose and then reverse the direction to come back out again. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be doing while I'm talking to you about Stacey. So, dip into tiger's blood. Now, I first met Stacy. it was either through, oh hello, I've forgotten how lovely this is, it was either through Anya or Nona that I met her. Uh, she'd collabed with one of them. 
um, and then they said to try and help. I think it must. I think it must have been Anya, because she was saying to try and help her grow her channel a bit. This is just a pad with my cellar water on, just to get the thickest of that off. I'm a numpty. I have not put a bloody eye primer on. Let's do that first, shall we? I thought that wasn't going on as smoothly as it would normally do. Oh, well, at least you get to see how I apply my eye primer now. Honestly. So, flat brush to start with. Just apply it quite sort of medium thickness, I suppose. Using the flat sides. And then get a blending brush. Just blend it out across the eye. So for those of you who wanted to know how I apply my primer, that's how. <sighs> this is what happens, folks, when you have fibro. You absolutely have a moment where, despite the fact you've got over 300 films, you used eye primer or something on your eyes under you, like under your shadows, in every single film, you still have moments. Right, let's dip back into Tiger's Blood and try that again. Yeah, I think it must have been Anya that I met that I first discovered Stacy through. Um, because she asked, could we... And do you see how much smoother that's going on? Lovely. Um, she asked, could Stacy join us in a Bitches of Eastwick film to try and help grow her channel a bit? And Lona and myself were like, yeah, of course, no problem at all. Not a problem. Um, and I just, I love some of the looks that she does. And she and I chat through Insta, I would say pretty much on a daily basis now. Checking up on each other, you know, medically how we're both doing, etc. And she's such an absolute sweetheart. She really is a very genuine, caring person, you know? There's no... My nan would have said there's no side to her. You know, what you see is what you get. And I love that in people. Because, uh, to be quite honest, I'm too old, too ugly and too fat to pretend I don't like people. Or to pretend to like people that I don't. So, I am very much the human equivalent of Marmite. You either love me or you hate me. Um, and I love that Stacy is very much, do you know what, this is me, take it or leave it. And she's just an absolute sweetheart. She really is. Um, if you've not... I have collabed with her a couple of times. Not just on the Bitches of Eastwick one. We did a previous collab to her. I think it was the... I'm pretty sure... We collabed on the Peachy Keen... Um, 
palette. I think. I'm sure we did. Um, and bless her shoe. It was so long from me ordering it to it actually arriving. And not once did she say, look, do you know what? Because I want to get this up on my channel, we'll just collab with a different one. Or, you know, we'll, we'll still do our collab, but I want to put my review up. She quite happily waited for mine to arrive. Um, and that is just, you know, that, that shows you the measure of the woman. This orange is really beautiful. And I am really liking it. Gone a little bit further up the eye than I was intending, but hey ho. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off from my microfiber cloth. I think I'll use the same brush and I'll flip across to slush 2 and go into orange peach which is a that shade bless my hubby he's actually because he hadn't got me anything yet for our anniversary, which was the middle of April, or my birthday, which was the 1st of May, because Jeffrey normally has a release round about then, and he'll get me the palette for our anniversary, and then some lipsticks or whatever for my birthday. And of course, it's all been delayed this year, so I said to him, well, Wait until the Jeffrey stuff comes out and just get it for me whenever it comes out. So because it was it was like, well I can't not get you something. Bless him, he bought me a starter kit on how to do acrylic nails at home. So I've just ordered one of those like folding TV table things. Because obviously I don't want to risk getting monomer and acrylic and all sorts on our nice tables. Whereas if it's a cheap TV table, I don't care if it gets ruined, you know. And I'm going to have a practice. So, be prepared for a few films on my nails. Potentially, could look a bit ratchet. Right, you can see I'm just using this lighter colour. Just to blend the edge out. And I started off by going over the deeper shade and blending it up so we get a real, as John McLean would say, seamless transition. So, yeah, I mean, it could be that this, this lockdown, you know, I might learn a new skill. I mean, I've been having my nails done for over 10 years now, so it's not like I don't know the process. And if I get on okay with it, I might get myself some gel nails and a, a gel polish and some, you know, a UV lamp and crack on. But I think initially what I'll do is I'll just do acrylic and I might have a bash at sculpting acrylic flowers or something. I've got some test nails that I can practice on before I have a go at my own nails because of course the biggest thing will be doing my non or, or doing my dominant hand with my non dominant hand so using my left hand to do the right uh, yay. how pretty is that I know Nona is going to love this because she loves orange. She loves orange eyeshadow. So I know she's going to love this. But yeah, we decided, um, Stacey and I, just to choose one strip of colour. 
so whichever colour we chose from both palettes basically and obviously so far I've used one shade from each palette just clean the brush off then I've got this, this is like a larger pencil brush if I hold it against a normal pencil brush you can see the difference in size so I'm just going to use this one back into Tiger's Blood just to put some on the outer corner of my mobile lid Now with this eye, because I've got this super deep creasing just here, when it comes to applying shadow to that inner third of the eye there, the mobile lid, I do have to actually stretch my lid out. I hate having to do it, but unfortunately I have to. Um, because otherwise the pigment packs loosely into that area and ends up cascading down my face into my eyes and it gets super super painful now I'm going to try something a little different I'm going to try putting mattes down and then going over them with a shimmer this may work Oh, this may be a complete and utter catastrophe, darling. So, I'm going to go into Tequila Sunrise. As opposed to Tequila Mockingbird. <coughs> Sorry, bad dad joke. On this brush again. I'm just going to pop that onto the inner third of my mobile lid and obviously I'm applying it dry now what I do with this is I only stretch out the part of the lid that needs stretching out only stretch it out as far as it needs to go and I'll let go as soon as I can for some reason that's showing up so much brighter on this side than this one Doing, I don't want to have to vet you. Why are you doing this? I don't know. Right, going back into slush one, I'm going to go into orange soda, which is a beautiful shade. If it'll show up on my lid. for some reason my right lid today playing silly buggers nice. you can see it's a real real neon going on there yes there's a lot of fallout I don't care I do my base afterwards Nice, 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 n
with a wet brush. So I've gone in, gone in dry, boys. <coughs> And then I'm going to use my Revolution Caffeine Spray just to wet brush, dry off this ferrule. Easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and uh, loosening those bristles because then you're not going to have a brush, you're going to have a stick. And I'm going to gently this shimmer on top of the mat but still trying to let some of the mat shine through That's pretty, I like that. And then dry the brush off because I'm not going to go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. See, I know which colour Stacey has chosen and it's going to look fabulous on her. It has one of the best, best shimmers ever. Same again here. Stretch out the inner corner. And then let go. I'm just using the very tip of the bristles there just to blend it. into the matte shade at the end. How pretty is that? Hmm. I really should wear orange more often. Right, my lovelies. I am going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I am going to have to wait until the next time I press record in order to be able to speak to you. But you, my darlings, you're going to see me instantly. Hey! And I am back. As you can see, I decided to go for orange brows. Uh, the way I did that is I used the... Revolution Soap Brow Kit thing, just to brush them up. And then from Slush 2, use the shade Frozen Sangria here. On this brush, just to brush it through while the soap was still tacky. Um, it's a really good one. I used to use coloured pomades. But Revolution seemed to have stopped selling them. A lot of people were saying they couldn't get hold of them. There were some colours that I wanted and couldn't get hold of. So this, for me, I found is the best, longest lasting way of using eyeshadows in order to have your brows match. So. You don't have to use the Revolution Brow Kit, you can just use spoolie on a bar of soap. I don't wet the soap, I just put it on dry. So going in with this flat top brush and I'm going to go into Tiger's Blood. And just run that along the lower lash line. This is the side I usually 
end up poking myself in the eye. So obviously being blind this side, I don't have any peripheral vision. And that viewfinder's a long way away. When you haven't got your glasses on. Or your contacts in. Success. Well, so far. Then I'm going to get, this is the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen brush. It came with the palette. It's flat topped and it's chunky. It's by far the best brush that I've found for blending out the under eye. But you can use just a, a chunky stubby blender brush. You can use a smudger brush. Um, you can even use those sponge tip applicator nonsense that we normally throw away. Right, I'm going to dip into Peach Lemonade in a Slush 1, which we've not used yet. I might tap some of that off a little bit. And use that to blend out the lower lash line. is super bright as you can see I don't put things in my lower lash or my waterline as a rule um, because my eyes just strain too much when I do that it's just a waste of time it really is um, it absolutely ruins any makeup look that I do. Now I'm going to grab, I've not used this for ages, this is the Jeffrey Princess Cut Highlight. It looks like that. I know it's pink. I know pink and orange shouldn't work together. But I'm still going to do it. This is a lip brush that I bought off of eBay, oh god, at least a decade ago now. I uh, used this in a mini tutorial recently to show you how to get rid of hard pan. The only problem is, of course, hard pan does keep coming back. But you can norm it normally takes a couple of months before it gets to the stage where you have to do it again. I'm not sure if that mini tutorial is up yet. Uh, have a look in the mini tutorial playlist. See if it's there. As you know, I like to bring mine along underneath the eye and blend it in with a lower lash line. Lush. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to go ham with this Jeffrey highlighter all over my face. I'm going to put some mascara on, some lippy, do something with my hair, and I will be back with my finished look. So don't go anywhere. I am back. Okay, princess cut in many places. Mascara is the Essence Lash Princess Volume which is the orange top and Lippy I decided just to go for a bit of lip gloss Wet Peach from Jeffree Star because I figured my eyes were doing all the talking for me courtesy of these babies. So what do you think? Do you like? Are you now tempted to try an all orange look if you haven't done one before? If you were the person subscribing with me rather than Stacey, which colour would you have chosen? Because I gave her first option because she'd not used the palettes before. I said, right, swatch the whole lot, choose whichever colour you want to start with. Because I've used 
both palettes all the shades numerous times I know that I love all of them so it's it's more difficult for me to narrow it down to which ones I want to use so having one shade less that I can use with her choosing a shade actually made my life a little bit easier so if it were you subscribing with me instead of Stacy which of those colors would you have chosen Right, my lovelies, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting you, but they are still showing you my films so that you don't realise you've been deleted. Uh, once you've checked that and checked your notifications are still live, it'd be awesome, please, if you could hit that like button, leave me a comment really helps with the algorithm with pushing my film out to people who haven't yet seen me and then I'm gonna need you to trot over to the lovely Stacey and watch her film and show her the same amount of love and support that you always do to me let her know you are part of the 4F family and show her some love if you are here from Stacey's channel or you are new because YouTube suddenly popped this into your suggested films. Hi, hello, welcome. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something you liked about this mad half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird who occasionally has an inability to speak. Thanks to my fibro and pain and yeah, life in general, really. It would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family, we are the nicest family on YouTube. And it is super easy to do that. You hit that little red subscribe button, turn it grey, ring the bell, say yes, however many times YouTube are asking you to say yes at the moment. And hopefully they will send you, I don't know, one in four notifications of my films. Speaking of which, I have an awful lot of other films you can watch. As I have said for some significant time now and I'm starting to hear copied or echoed on other channels, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge baby. Oh, hay fever, itchy nose, oh, was trying to hold out till the end of the film, couldn't do it. There you go. <laughs> At least I didn't sneeze at you. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.